Now, you don't need me to tell you that the PR strategy for most Hollywood studios in recent years has been suboptimal. You don't say. I know, right? Who would have thought that doubling and tripling down on unpopular positions and blaming your own customers for not accepting the absolute slop you've dished up for them wouldn't be a winner? But sometimes, when they're confronted with irrefutable proof that they've messed up, big time, they have no option but to go into damage control mode and try to put out the fire. Disney have certainly got a lot of PR fires to tackle right now, and one of the biggest has got to be the blazing pile of money that is Snow White. Why did you say that now? Formerly Snow White and the seven diverse gender non-conforming magical individuals, and recently changed to Snow White and the awkwardly composited CGI dwarves that look more visually jarring than putting Mr. Blobby into the next Saw movie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, a combination of poor initial concept, unflattering set photos, and incendiary statements by lead actress Rachel Zegler created the perfect storm of fan backlash that put the studio into all-out panic mode and forced them to delay the release by a full year while they desperately tried to fix the problem. The movie itself might be salvageable with rewrites and reshoots, although that's debatable, but the bigger problem now is how to change the perception of its controversial star. I mean, how do you get people to like someone whose public image just tanked worse than Jada Pinkett Smith. It's Hollywood, baby. Well, the answer came in the form of a variety interview between Rachel Zegler and Little Mermaid star Halle Bailey, who got together to bond over their shared experiences as Disney princesses. All 40 minutes of it. Now, a big chunk of the interview is just the two of them blowing smoke up each other's arses, but there is a point where they actually discuss something of substance, and that's the fan criticisms of their casting, given that they both played race-swapped versions of original characters. Now, one thing you might notice is how different Rachel Zegler looks, talks, and acts now compared to all those infamous interviews that got her into so much trouble. There is a big focus on her love story, um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Weird. I just mean that it's no longer 1937. And we... Uh, All of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. But <laughs> the brash, abrasive, outspoken Zegler is gone now, and in her place is a quiet, thoughtful, humble young woman who has nothing but praise and reverence for the story of Snow White. The cartoon was made 85 years ago, and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the idea of women being in roles of power. Several months later. The cartoon is so beloved. It's like a monumental moment in film history. Yeah. It was like the first feature length cartoon yeah. movie to the point where it, it won honorary Oscars and yeah. all of these amazing things that, that happened for that film are the reason that you and I really get to sit here today because yes. it made Disney what it is. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite the turnaround, eh? Whatever could have brought about such a change in attitudes? Don't worry, we'll talk about that later. Believe that. But the really interesting part for now is what happens when they discuss the backlash they both experienced in their roles, because this, dear viewer, is the real purpose of the entire 40-minute interview. Deflection. The way you are just so graceful and respond and don't, it's just the most beautiful thing to see. Because um, it's hard being women under the spotlight. People are so critical. Mm. See, there's some very smart psychology at work here, and it's not until you step back for a minute and think about the two different actresses that you realise how this interview is trying to manipulate you. Because in a nutshell, these two people are not alike at all. First up, let's consider Halle Bailey and the journey she's been on so far. She definitely took some heat for her role in The Little Mermaid, mostly because she was playing a race swap version of a historically white character. Now, you can debate the merits of that argument as much as you like, but the point here is that what most people had a problem with was Bailey's casting, not Bailey as a person. Why? Because she gave them no reason to. She generally came across as pretty charming and likeable in interviews and press junkets, just another actress doing her job and excited to be taking on such a big role. She didn't feel the need to bite back at her detractors. She didn't 
didn't criticise the original movie for its lack of diversity, and she didn't disrespect her own co-stars or act like she was entitled to even more than she already had. This was a very smart move on her part, because she largely avoided the controversy swirling around the movie, and today, most people seem to have a pretty sympathetic attitude towards her. Rachel Zegler, on the other hand, started out in much the same way, but ultimately followed a very different path. Her casting as Snow White definitely inspired the same complaints about disrespecting the source material, but crucially, those complaints were still directed at the film and the studio making it, not the actress playing the character. And if she'd just kept her mouth shut and weathered the storm, eventually it would have died down and nobody would have cared too much. But the point where it really went thermonuclear was when Ziegler's comments at press events and interviews resurfaced and people began to get a sense of who she was and how she felt about her role. It's extremely dated. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Weird. She's not going to be safe with the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. Now, I don't want to make assumptions and attribute motive here because none of us are mind readers and only she truly knows her position on all of this. Maybe all the fame and attention went to her head and she got a little too caught up in the moment, or maybe she misread the room and said what she thought people wanted to hear, only to realise later how wrong she was. Shit man, maybe she'd been given a load of talking points by Disney themselves and was just obediently saying what she'd been told to say. All of these things are possibilities for sure, but given that her comments were taken from multiple interviews at different times and places, but all seemed to follow the same common thread and tone, it doesn't seem unreasonable to conclude that this is her genuine personality and her real opinions. And for most people, it's fair to say she didn't exactly endear herself. She came across as brash, arrogant, entitled and disrespectful. She seemed to have nothing good to say about the original movie, she openly mocked the fairy tale that it was based on, and even laughed at the prospect that one of her co-stars might get removed from the film altogether. All of Andrew's scenes could get cut, who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. <laughs> Now, I'm not a Hollywood actor or a celebrity, but even I can tell you this is not how you conduct yourself in public, especially not when you're a relatively unknown actor headlining a film that people are already wary of. What you really need to be doing at a time like this is reassure your audience, projecting an image of someone who's very much aware of the responsibility resting on them, who has nothing but respect and reverence for the original movie that people are clearly still attached to, and who's determined to do the best they can to honour that legacy. You want to come across as someone Someone who's on their side, who understands their concerns and respects their views. Does that mean pushing down your own thoughts and opinions for the good of the project? Maybe swallowing your pride and ego a little to appear more humble and grateful than you actually are? Sure, but that's the name of the game. You're a fucking actor, your whole job is saying and doing things you don't actually believe, and just because the cameras might have stopped rolling it doesn't mean that job is over. All of this is a long-winded way of saying that unlike Halle Bailey, Rachel Zegler kinda brought most of this on herself. Yeah, she might have been dealt a difficult hand at first, but she played her cards in the worst possible way, turning general antagonism towards the movie into personal dislike of her. Which brings me neatly back to that all-important Variety interview and why it was a particularly cunning move on Disney's part. See, if you put two actresses together who superficially have a lot in common and both experience backlash against their casting, it's very easy to create a strong association in the minds of the audience. As a great man once said, you might not have noticed that, but your brain did. Clearly they were both discriminated against for the exact same reason, and so neither of them are to blame for what happened to them, conveniently ignoring the fact that one of them absolutely is. It's a false equivalency designed to generate sympathy and guilt that relies on people either having incredibly short memories and forgetting the real reason for the backlash against Ziegler, or being complete normies with no deeper understanding of what actually happened in the first place. Bailey is there for one reason and one reason only, to run interference for Rachel Ziegler, taking some of the heat off her and diffusing it in the same way she diffused the backlash against her cast in Azariel, by being charming and likeable. Meanwhile, Zegler's been carefully coached to say exactly the correct things in exactly the correct tone of voice, to come across as thoughtful, mature and agreeable, rather than brash, overconfident and opinionated. It's all very slick, all very carefully managed and considered to generate maximum impact, but the question is, does it actually work? 
Well, personally, I'm a big believer in second chances and redemption. I think there always has to be a road back for people that have made mistakes in the past, otherwise you give them no incentive to change their ways. For example, Brie Larson's managed to put a lot of her past controversies behind her by steering clear of political posturing and divisive public statements and just getting on with the work of being an actor. Yeah, it didn't help much for her latest movie, but let's be honest, I don't think she was the reason the Marvels failed. It's kind of hard to stay mad at anyone that's genuinely sorry for what they did and wants to make amends. But that's the key word here, genuine. It has to seem like it's actually real, and in this case, it doesn't. None of it comes across as a genuine attempt to make amends and set the record straight. It's more like a carefully calculated deception, deflecting responsibility for past mistakes onto other people, and quietly changing course without acknowledging that you were on the wrong one to begin with. It's a very slick piece of spin doctoring from a studio that knows they've done wrong, but can't bring themselves to admit to it. And well, I don't think it's going to change too many people's minds about the film or the actress. Oh, and just before I go, here's a little reminder that the new Critical Drinker merch store is well and truly up and running and fulfilling orders as we speak. So if you're in the market for a Christmas gift that'll change your life forever, then the link is in the description. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. No! <laughs>